Okay, here we go. Little uh, studio tour here in the basement. Um, just turn things around here. Okay, this is kind of where I work from. Um, as you come in, I have a uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb amp reissue. It's a 68 reissue, 112 in there. Seems to work uh, fine for what I want to do. Um, the bass I use is a Fender Jaguar bass made in Japan. It's really a lot like a, a jazz bass. A lot of switches, dials. I don't really know what they do, but I, I seem to get a, a decent sound out of it either through an amp or through a simulator in Reaper, which is what I use, which I'll show you. Um, this little amp here is a Fender Mustang LT25. It's solid state. Um, it has a bunch of amps, a bunch of effects. Um, not real crazy about it. I'm sometimes I'm just looking for just a uh, just a simple a simple amp, and this seems to have just too much too much of everything. But um, I just haven't corralled the the, the right sound with it. Um, here's one of the acoustics. This is a a Martin uh, GPRS. Road Series, what is it called? A Road Series, let me know if the number's in there. But it's like a GPRS one. It's kind of like a concert or a double zero size. Pretty decent. Has a pickup in it. Um, controls are in, in the sound hole. Nice woody sound to it. Um, the canvas I paint it over and over and over and I'm sure I'll paint over it again um, monitors I have Mackie or I'm sorry M audio BX5 and they seem to be fine I have a PreSonus headphone amp an HP4 works great um, just different pedals I have the RC3 Boss Loop Pedal. I uh, have a Alberta 2 Dual Overdrive. This kind of just allows you to set up two different overdrives and just switch between one and the other. They're, they're the same. You just dial them in how you like them with the gain and the tone and everything. Um, all the harmonicas, I, I put a piece of tape on there with the key harmonicas. Um, headphones, always like these uh, Audio Technica. These are ATH M50Xs. I think I have two pairs of those. This is a Perception 200 AKG condenser uh, microphone. I do have a, uh, a TV I use as a monitor. Um, it's a basic monitor, actually two basic monitors. So I have three. I have uh, OBS running on this one over here, and then I generally have Reaper on this one here. Let's just see. If I open up a file. So there's my Reaper. Um, Focusrite is the interface I use. This is a an 18i8. Has uh, four XLRs in the front, two headphone jacks, and uh, I believe there's four inputs in the back and two outputs. A um, bunch of other mics I have. Uh, this is a this is a Electro Voice Cobalt CO9. Um, 
kind of looks like an SM58. I have a bunch of SM58s and a few SM57s. Here's another AKG. This is a P220. Um, they stopped selling, I guess, the Perception 200, and I, this maybe this was the next step up, and I got one of these. And there's a Rode NT1A, and has a screen on it. Um, the keyboard, really, I use it for MIDI. Uh, it's a Yamaha. It does have sounds. But I use it primarily for MIDI, and it is a, uh, a portable Grand DGX 620. I have a, a USB mixer. This is pretty good. It's a Yamaha MG10XU. It has effects. It has a USB in the back. Good for a little trio or solo or duo gigs. It has effects on board. Um, your basic mixer. And a bigger Yamaha. Not USB. This is a, an MG166CX. I've had it for a while and it works well. Also has uh, effects. Uh, it's one of the SM58s here. Uh, but this is kind of where I pivot. That's why it's sort of a mess. I want everything within reach. Um, when the band comes over, uh, I, I do have a monitor speaker here in front of me. And then as I just kind of a mess of supplies, cables, uh, pedals, tools, tambourine, uh, box of harmonicas in there, mic stand, little pig nose I got back probably in the 80s, bunch of cables, little personal monitor, um, uh, it has pretty good sound, it's a Behringer Eurolive B205D, um, this is my 1984 Strat, American Strat. Um, I it's gunmetal. I think it's called gunmetal blue. I put a, a pearloid pickguard on it, and I replaced that bridge pickup with some kind of a Demarzio. Um, but it, it seems to work fine. Um, little pedal board. Get the Vox Wawa. Voodoo Lab Sparkle Drive, Full Drive, 2 MOSFET. And most of these I, I saw somebody on YouTube with them. And I bought it and thought I'd sound like them. And, eh, with good and bad results. It's a tube, stra tube screamer. Don't really sound like Stevie Ray Vaughan, but it's a compressor. A little Donner. These are little cheap uh, Chinese pedals, but they're good for kind of fitting in on a pedal board. There's my pedal power so I can plug a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, I just got a, for this past year, I got a, a direct box uh, MXR double drive. Again, a lot of this stuff I, I see on YouTube and I get it. The cheap equalizer. I generally use the uh, kind of the common Boss Equalizer, the GE7. An old, um, well, I say old. I think I bought it in the 90s when they first came out. This is a Fender Blues DeVille with four tens when they first came out. I think 93 or 94. They've had some reissues. Um, real heavy. There's an Ampeg. Uh, BA-115 bass amp, solid state, it has a direct line out, has a tuner which is cool, um, different presets, different styles, but again if the band comes over that's sort of the, the bass amp. Most of my bass, any recording I, done, I do through Reaper. Um, there's the other Mackie 12 inch, I think it's a, I forget what it's called, Thump. 12A. I have two of those. And then I have the 15 back here. Another 15 over there. And below it I have the old communities. These are uh, 
CSX, I think 35s or something. They're not powered. The Mackies are. So the communities don't get too much life anymore or too much action. Uh, drum set is an old 70s um, Vista Light Ludwig set for my friend Phil I bought uh, when he got a new set. A uh, couple guitars here. SG. You know, SG Special. You know, nothing too, too frilly about it. I did put a Bigsby on it. Nice and light so they're easier to deal with than the Les Paul, um, which is in the case over there. The cases. Um, I have my Guild Acoustic I've had for, I don't know, 20, 20 or so years. This is a Acoustic Electric. I don't even know what the model is. It's in there. AC, DC, I'm sorry, DC5E, something like that. Uh, there's a Gretsch Electromatic. Let me get that Beatles jangly sound. Um... I think I missed anything over here. Ah, there was a keyboard under there. Not sure. That's uh, well, that's my son's mini novation synthesizer. Pretty cool. Uh, I do have a keyboard over here. This is a kind of a, an entry level small key um, Yamaha. It's a PSR EW410, which. Um, It does a lot of stuff. I can use it for MIDI. I thought maybe I'd use it if the band ever needed a keyboard when we play out. Um, I guess the sounds are okay. But again, it's not it's not this isn't professional. A lot of different sounds pretty good to practice um, do have some power amps I have a QSC GX5 have another uh, interface under here Focusrite 18i6 might have been my first interface uh, a little MacBook here and uh, stack of guitars there I have a Les Paul and a Tele in a case over there um, and I think that's it. A couple guitars on the wall. These, this is actually my first acoustic. It's a Gibson. Uh, I never saw a Gibson that looked like this or a headstock that looked like this. Um, I think I bought it for 200 bucks new in Virginia when I was 17 or 18. Put a pickup in it. Uh, Yamaha, I just kind of inherited. Yamaha's okay. Um, guitar I built kind of took a the lower half is kind of the body of a telly sort of with the, the curves of a Les Paul and then a, a telly and a Strat kind of just created different horns there and it's sort of a, a telly neck that I bought from uh, Warmoth I think so there's another picture of guitars when they were new um, an old Hofner 12 string. Bought for 20 bucks at an auto garage one day. It was covered in dust under a blanket on a car. Um, doesn't play great, but it's it's kind of a cool piece. I think it was made in, I think it's inside, it says, I think it says 1966. But a really cool pick guard. It's kind of a wood laminated carved pick guard. This is a Squire Telly that I bought for $15 at a yard sale. It was brand new. It was black. It had Moby's autograph on the pick guard, which I took off and stored. I'm sure I'll cash in on Moby's uh, notoriety in 50 years. I've had five strings on this. I kind of just tune it to open G and Sort of do the uh, Keith Richards stuff with it. It's a picture I painted of the King. Now this is the second guitar I built. Uh, actually, this this has the Les Paul body to it down below, and then 
Uh, again, I sort of just created, uh, my wife and I sort of sketched out that design. Uh, this is a carven neck. I, I hated the shape of carvings. And the neck itself is, it's, a, it's straight and everything, but it's not real smooth on the edges. You, your fingers get caught on some of the uh, frets. And then that's our first band, Lars Guitar Army. It's the bass drum. Another picture I did. Another picture I did of the Beatles. And actually, that's an old Tascam that I have, Porta Studio 424, which I don't know if that's what I started with. No, I think I had an old Fostix. And then there's a picture of John Lennon. Another picture. Here's the old Marshall uh, Super Lead, 100 watt Super Lead head from 1974. And the 4, 412 uh, cabinet, slant cabinet. And then there's a uh, kind of a Gibson Les Paul Special. Pretty, pretty nice color. P90s. And more supplies. All right, I think that's it. Hope you enjoyed it.